to another edition of the Sewing Guru. Now in this particular collection I'm going to show you how to create the gents jacket with a shawl collar. So what a shawl collar is, as you can see, is one complete piece. And it's literally the collar and lapel in one. Now as you can see on my jacket, this here is a notch collar. And it's got a kind of a V and you can clearly see where the collar and the lapel get attached together. But a shawl collar is, like I say, one complete piece. So it's like an entire lapel right round the whole thing. Now you will usually see this sort of thing on a dinner jacket. That's the most common that you would see them on. And of course the lapel would be a different fabric. It's usually like a shiny satin or something like that, which would give a complete contrast. And of course that gives a kind of dinner suit, tuxedo feel and look to it. Now of course you can also have a shawl collar on a standard tailored jacket as well um, and that looks just as good but of course with a shawl collar on a tuxedo or a dinner suit it really does look like a special garment okay especially with the contrast of the satin lapel on the front so what I'm going to cover in this particular video is of course the equipment and the fabrics that you are going to need to make your tailored jacket now, of course, if you're going to be making the jacket for a lady, okay, you can then incorporate how I create this shawl collar, but then, of course, uh, incorporate it with the lady's tailor's jacket, which, of course, is a collection within the website as well. So what you can do is just combine the two together, um, and you would then also be able to create your shawl collar in that particular manner. So, like I said, the first thing what I'm going to do is show you the equipment that you are going to need to create your tailored jacket. So, as you can see, I've got all of my fabrics and equipment laid out of what I'm going to need to create my jacket. So, the first thing is we're going to cover the fabrics. Very important, it's really the, uh, the body of the actual jacket itself, so very, very important of course. Always start with the fabric that you really like that's going to be creating your jacket. Now I'm going for a light uh, cotton and wool mix fabric, okay? It's a medium weight and I've chosen a very, very light fabric because then it's easy for you to see what I'm doing when I'm stitching and uh, putting all the various panels and parts together. Okay, so I've got my main body fabric. Okay, now I've got my lining, which is a viscose lining, and of course that contrasts very well with the fabric that I'm going to be using. Now, of course, there is other linings. I mean, you can have a satin lining, or you can use a cotton lining. Okay, um, I think the satin lining is probably the best because. It, it really, really gives a nice body to it. But of course, your standard viscose lining is great as well, okay? It does just exactly the same job, apart from one is slightly better quality than the other. Now, of course, I've got my calico, or you can use a curtain lining. And of course, I've got that because we're going to be creating a toile or a first proof after we've measured the body of the person um, or yourself, of course, that you're making the jacket for, okay? So it's always best to make a first proof. So we will be covering that as well. So I've got my curtain lining here, or calico, and I've got that right there, okay? Now I've got enough fabric for my calico, of course, to be able to create the main body of the jacket to get the fitting just right, okay? So you need about two meters. If it's 60 inches wide, you get about two meters of this, um, because, of course, you, you're going to be... Um, cutting pieces off, putting pieces back on, just to adjust it all, uh, and then that makes that ready for the pattern construction as well, okay? So you need your calico for your first proof or toile. Now, we then come to the fusings and the canvases, okay? Now, I've got a medium weight fusing, okay? Now, it got 
um, a glue on one side which is bobbly okay and of course with the press it's going to melt onto the fabric and it's going to just stick onto the fabric when it dries okay and it's going to secure the whole thing um, and it just fuses onto the main fabric okay now of course there is all these different fusings there's ones that you can stitch into all of the panels but to be honest with you that is a little bit old-fashioned now um, they are really really old-fashioned traditional tailoring techniques and of course they don't really do that in the industry anymore and of course I'm showing you how this is done um, from the industry but of course watered down to the home sewer so you can create this yourself so I would advise to get the iron-on interfacing uh, because it's quick and it's the modern way nowadays. So I've got my interfacing or fusing, okay, and of course we've got our canvases. Just bring that over. Now there is different types of canvas, okay. Now you've got I've got a list here um, of the different canvases that you can get. Now uh, this is my little booklet when I when I order canvases and, and fusings and things like that. Uh, but you've got the the these are what's known as a hair canvas. Okay, now you can get it in a wool and hair and viscose mix, or you can just have a cotton and viscose with hair canvas. Okay, so there's various mixes and things like that. But this is um, a wool and hair canvas. Now I've got different weights here for the different parts of the front part of the jacket okay and it all gets put on together as layers so I've got a heavier weight and then I've got a slightly lighter weight than the heavier weight and again it's a hair canvas so they look the same and we have here a very very lightweight canvas as well okay and that will cover of course within one of the layers but of course if you go to your tailoring shop uh, or haberdashery shop okay they can give you advice of the different canvases that you're going to need but generally you need to get the canvases which are going to match the body of the fabric weight that you've got for your main jacket like for instance I've got here the main fabric here which is a wool uh, mix okay so that is an ideal weight to match for this here okay and of course your fusing as well you know you're going to get a medium weight fusing or the kind of fusing which is going to match your outer fabric but again you can get advice from the people that you buy the fabrics for uh, from in your haberdashery place okay so we've covered those now of course I'm going to be using a commercial pattern and the one that I've got is a Vogue pattern for men and it's number 2383 and of course it's the one for a shawl collar. Now this pattern does actually cover uh, trousers and a jacket as well, so it's a full suit. Um, and there is a shawl collar and also another lapel type on there as well. But of course I need the shawl collar because that's what we're going to be creating. So I'm going to be working with this particular pattern. Now there is going to be details about the pattern on the website so you know exactly which one that you need to get. Um, but to be honest with you, any pattern that covers a shawl collar will be roughly the same because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be measuring and then we're going to be manipulating the pattern with, of course, in combination with our twirling fabric when we make it up for the first proof. Okay, so of course you need your commercial pattern for a tailored jacket with a shawl collar. Okay, now you must get that pattern after you've done your measurements for either yourself or the person that you're creating this jacket for because what you need to do is get all your measurements which I'll be showing you in the next video of course how to measure um, and get all your measurements and once you've got those you're going to know then the size of the pattern which is going to match your measurements okay so of course you're going to need a pattern sheet now this can be printed off the website in a pdf format just print that off and it's exactly the same as the one that i've got here and of course like i say i'll be going over the measurement process in the next video now i also have here what's called wadding for shoulder roll okay and what that does in combination with your shoulder pads you need shoulder pads as well 
it causes this nice roll on the sleeve head here, okay, and that's what you get from the wadding of the shoulder roll, so it's called sleeve heading wadding. Okay, so you need that as well, you need your shoulder pads, a pair of shoulder pads, one for the left, one for the right. And of course, we've got all our main equipment here, like pins, little scissors, our threads that we're going to be using. Okay, so you need to get threads which are going to obviously match the colour of your outer fabric that you're going to choose to make your jacket. And of course, you've got your sewing machine um, uh, to be able to create the jacket with, of course. Now, um, of course, when, when you're measuring uh, and you're writing all the measurements down, and of course you're going to be manipulating these measurements uh, to be able to alter your pattern, you need a calculator, a pen, and of course a tape measure. Okay, so basically that's what it is. I've covered just about all of the equipment that you're going to need. Okay, and that we are now ready to go on to the next video where I'm going to show you how to measure for ready to start the pattern construction for your tailored jacket with a shawl collar. So I will see you in the next video.